While I have been known as the Naboo guy in the retro community for a while, I found that this last video I did with the Apple II got some decent reception, but at the same time, I enjoyed myself. And that made me think I should do another one, something completely different. And I figure we're gonna grab a completely different system than Naboo, and it is going to be Fairchild Channel F. Here we go. Okay, it's been a long time. And you know, this is actually the original Fairchild that I had as a kid because my dad, after they left, they started Naboo, then went to Apple Canada, then my father started a video game company. And uh, interesting fact, 8-bit show and tell, Robin used to work for my dad at one of his arcades. The Fairchild Channel F for my personal history is I found it in the back of my dad's warehouse at where he used to fix all the video games. And the guy who owned the company before him was this German guy, uh, interesting guy because he actually did a few weird things. One of the things he did, which I'll have to tell a story about another day, is he put an Atari in computer inside of a video game cabinet with pull position so that he didn't have to pay for the actual PCB and circuit board and he can switch the games out to Qbert and different cartridges. So he was an interesting guy when it came to uh, how he ran his business. So I don't know what he had the channel left for, if it was an idea where he was gonna put it inside of a video game and allow people to be able to put in a quarter and then that would essentially push one of the start buttons and then they can play the game. I wasn't sure what exactly his, his approach was, but I was pretty young when I came across it. And I mean, it was already very outdated, but I have to say, I remember bringing it home, plugging it in, and it had the best version of Pong. I think the Angry Video Game Nerd did a episode, I think it was him, on the Fairchild Channel F where he talked about Pong <laughs> and we'll, we'll turn it on and check it out because it was really wild. You could turn the controller. Now I think this is actually kind of fitting for the Naboo world because, well, I, if you recall, the joysticks that Naboo uses were modeled off of the Fairchild Channel F. Well, look, I do have a Naboo joystick lying around. So this is perfect. We can compare the two to see how different they are. And size-wise, identical. Mold, shape, I would say it's identical. Um, everything except for the bottom here. Now, if you look at the bottom of the Naboo joystick, they have a sticker on the Naboo joystick under here that is actually filling a hole. And putting my finger on here, I can feel the hole. And if you look, it's square. And then they put something on the side for the wire to come out. They used this for the Fairchild, because the Fairchild came out first in the 1970s. But when Nabu contacted this company and wanted to get the joystick made, what happened is they wanted the cable to come out the side, but they didn't want to pay to have the mold modified. So they put a sticker over top of it. Now you have to remember, everything I have that's Nabu related is probably prototype. So you'd have to maybe hear from Leo, who was at Nabu later on in the years, and he would remember if uh, if this particular joystick, if it, in joysticks he saw, had this hole filled in. If they did have the hole filled in, what that would have meant is that they would have either made a new mold or they would have added to the mold. Now. Adding to a mold is very, very expensive. And I know because my one of my last companies, we injection molded plastic for robot parts. Nabu thought, well, let's just put a sticker over it. But other than that, I think they are identical. Now, with the Nabu joystick, of course, you cannot rotate it, you cannot push down, and you cannot pull up. Instead, they mounted a button. Now, the difference between the Fairchild Channel F, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, is you can push down, you can pull up, you can rotate, and of course use it as a regular joystick. So for Pong, it was really great. You could do all these different things. Um, I'm going to have some stories about where the joystick came from and some other things as well, because I've been talking a lot with my family and a few other people, and I'm going to be able to assemble some really good stories for all of you about the Naboo world. 
in the meantime, we'll continue playing with some of this old retro stuff. So let's take a look at what makes this special. It does have a card, a cartridge in here, but we don't have to be fooled because you know me, this probably has a Raspberry Pi inside of it. And it does. So I'm gonna have to open this thing up and we'll take a look and see what I had done when I built it. Let's take it downstairs into my basement lab and see what we can, uh, move everything out of the way, see what's inside of it. Oh, look, <laughs> there's me. Okay, so let's take a look at this, insides of this guy. I can tell you that I have a couple more of these in my storage locker, so I uh, didn't feel too bad hacking this one. Okay, one, and then there's one screw over here. So I think there's just the three screws that we need to take out in order to get the top off. Flip them over and see if it separates. Oh, look at that. It couldn't have been any easier. Perfect. So we'll put this off to the side. As it's, you can see, it was inspected by, by number eight. Cool. And here we are. So what I've done, Raspberry Pi, of course. And I have two Arduinos in here. Now, why do I have two? Oh, I bet you I know why I have two. Look how many connections there are, how much IO there is for one joystick. It's because there's so many different switches. Up, down, left, right, turn left, turn right, pull up, push down. So I'm gathering a random of IO on these little pro micros. I like these pro micros. They're cheap and they're easy to program. And they, uh, they have um, a USB driver. They, the actual micro, the, I can't remember what Atmel chip they use, but they actually don't have a, uh, one of those CMF or CHF, yeah, I think it's CHF, um, URT to USB chip, so they don't have one of those. So it actually hooks USB directly into the actual micro. So you can simulate a keyboard, you can simulate a mouse. Now, I've also hooked up from this micro here to the buttons, and it also looks like I 3D printed something to hold the buttons in place. And I screwed in with little standoffs the circuit board here. I imagine the bottom of the circuit board is going to be ugly. I don't, uh, I wonder if we should take it off and take a look. I think we should. So I could probably undo the screws in the bottom. It'll be easier than taking them off the top. So let's take a look and see what kind of terrible soldering work I did to hold that thing together. My computer browser has been updated. Well, that's really nice of you, Microsoft, to tell me every single time my browser's been updated. I mean, it's a web browser, right? What's the point of needing to be told that it's been updated? Would I have to like learn how to uh, drive my car every time I put new gas in it? Okay. Oh, I did an actual clean job. Okay, I surprised myself. That was a lot of work to take it apart just to show you that everything looks good. I think the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do before we turn this guy on is check out the code that I wrote for these two Arduinos. It's neat that I left this here so we can still put cartridges in, make it look like it's the cartridges are doing something. Now, if I recall in my basement here in my storage room, someplace way down here, Look at, there it is. I knew I had it. I actually have, look at that. The original box. <laughs> that also explains why I have the, um, the uh, booklet manual that it came with as well. So not a lot to it. Box is pretty, pretty bare actually. Back when they didn't have to, I guess they didn't think of what they were going to say. You think on the back of the box they would have had something talking about how great of a computer it was or something, but that's all we get. Just the Fairchild Video Entertainment System. And in case you're wondering 
Yes, this is all in television games. <laughs> and which is funny about this, look at this. This is from Cash Converters. I don't know if they had them in the States, but here in Canada, it was like a one of the first generation pawn shops. And this is $2.99. In fact, I have a Intellivision, again, I think it's in storage, another Intellivision, but it has the original price tag on it. That was, I think I paid like $4.99 for it. It's pretty neat. You can see all these little pieces of dust floating around because I don't come in here very often. And what's this? Oh yeah, look, we have some other things we can play with someday. Terminal, I know I have another like, couple laptops in there. To power the Raspberry Pi, it uses a micro USB. So I know in one of these, I have micro USB. Oh. That's VR, that's not gonna help. USB, maybe, maybe it's this one. Do, do, do. Oh, what's this? USB-C <laughs> and a shit ton of Intellivision templates. Lots of joysticks. Oh, this is a really cool joystick. I see a lot of these online. This was given to me from um, Robin from 8-Bit Show and Tell. Thank you so much, Robin. It just occurred to me that maybe at one point I was playing, oh, look at this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah, at one point, oh no, it's USB-C as well. Okay, I just ran around everywhere looking for a power adapter and I found one in my basement. So here we go. See, that's one of the troubles with living someplace half the time. So having two places makes it difficult to remember where you keep things. So we can plug this in now. Do, 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 do. I think it'll be fitting to keep the cartridge inside so it looks like we're there we go, like we're playing a real game. Now, interesting, let's take a little look at the manual so we can get acquainted with our components. Our joy, or our hand controllers, not our joystick, sorry. Well, so many goodies here. Connecting the system. Yeah, we got the HDMI connected, so it's set. We have some buttons here we can push. I know there was some built-in games. You have to think about it back when this was created in the 1970s, there wasn't a lot of knowledge on how to create a document for consumers, like a manual for consumers yet. So they made it pretty simple when you consider nobody had a clue <laughs> what this was and what they were buying and what they were gonna get out of it. So. There's not a lot here, like we saw with the box. There wasn't even very much information. I guess they didn't really know how to market this stuff and they didn't know how to educate the consumer. Nowadays, you would get the same experience. You wouldn't get very much because people assume you know how to use it. But for a while there, in the, say in the 80s and the 90s and early 2000s, there were big manuals and lots of tutorials to educate people on what it was they just bought. Okay, so there's a button back here I can flick. Turn on the Raspberry Pi. There we go. Raspberry. So why don't we take a little look on the computer at the source code and what changes I've made to make this thing work with the buttons and the Arduinos. So here are my Arduino projects and we're looking at the Fairchild Channel F. So this folder here, the Fairchild Channel F Master, this has the actual emulator inside of it. Now, what changes I made to make this thing work? Ah, you know, I really don't know. I don't know if I have to, if I have it logged instead of SVN here, let's see. I have the day I checked it in and that's it. I don't have anything else. So let's take a look at the paddle code first. So it looks like I am including the HID probably for the joystick. Here's my joystick library. And 
here's the code. All right, let's take a look. So it's a joystick USB HID for Teensia Pro Micro by me, 2019, November 16th. And if I recall, I think the Apple I did was in November as well in 2019. I think it was more like near the end of the month. So that's pretty cool. Looks like I was busy. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, you need the following. That's right, you need to specify this inside of your boot command txt for the micro to differentiate the two because when you have two micros hooked up it doesn't know the difference between them so you have to specify an id here 36 and 37 for there to be two micros i have the pinout here for each controller that's going to be helpful if you're ever going to Want to do the same thing as I have done here. And the analog joystick left. So it looks like I'm using the analog ports as well as the digital ports because I need to uh, to use up all the I.O. that's on these on these micros. So the joysticks have four buttons and two directions. So I keep track of the direction that the joystick is currently pushing. That way I don't send the command multiple times, it looks like. So I specify all the pin modes for each of the joystick inputs. Now I'm doing input pull-up, so I'm using the internal pull-ups on the micro so that we don't get any floating um, input lines, which will be triggered with static, specifically if you're playing on carpet. So some debug information if you have serial debug enabled. That writes it out to the viewer to the serial port, so you'll be able to uh, see it on your on your console, your terminal inside of the uh, Arduino editor. And if you're not, and you're running it actually without debug, then it reads the joystick, and it sets the values, and then it sets the actual joystick. So left, right. So this is Y. So this would be up and down, and this is your right to left. And then we have it for twist as well for joystick one. And then finally we have push up <laughs> and now we're on joystick two. So we have push and pull up here still, <laughs> that's funny. So there's a lot of code here because there's joystick one, joystick two. I could have collapsed these two into a single function and rep replicated joystick one and joystick two. I just passed, uh, passed some sort of structure that would have uh, a pointer to a structure that would have contained all the relevant ports and stuff and data but whatever, I'm sure I just copy and paste it and got it done. Here is the Fairchild Channel Pi, <laughs> the Channel Pi until Channel F. I didn't even notice that until now. Keyboard switches. So this is a very simple project. Looks like there's only one, one file, no joystick emulation, of course. So this is the buttons for reset, S1, S2, S3, select, start. So of course we always have some debug information in here. Um, I specify the pin modes, again, pull up so that we can use the internal resistors on the IO. And I set the, uh, <laughs> the, the value based upon whether the button's pushed or not. Simple as that. And then for to make sure that if you hold the button down, I don't send a ton of them, I just keep track of the last button, last time select was pushed. And it looks like select is Q, W, and then your buttons S1, S2, or just number one, two, three, or four. Simple as that. And I can't recall what problems I had getting the emulator to work. I feel like it had something to do with the front buttons, but I also remember, and I do remember this part, going through the emulator was actually super easy. Whoever wrote this did a really clean job, and there wasn't a lot, I think, to emulate. I think the F8 here is the processor that it was using. It's just emulated the CPU, and everything else was just all the, the circuit logic. I have an idea. So I visited the Free Chef. Free? Free Chef? Free Chef. I visited the GitHub repository for Free Chef and I downloaded the source code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the source code folder from the archive I just archived and paste it on top of what I have in my computer here and replace all the files. And then when I go to check in this project, I should see files that have been modified. Oh my gosh, it looks like I made more changes than you would think. And... Wow, 
Wow, okay, so there were some significant changes that might have been done either by them, uh, the original author, or myself. So I'm not even sure where I would find the changes that I had made and why I made them. Hmm. Well, that does mean one thing, that I won't be able to update to the newest repository because whatever changes I had to make to work inside of my environment doesn't exist. <laughs> and it's not gonna be easy to be able to, to see the difference between um, merging these two different code bases. So I'm just going to delete what I just downloaded and re-update with what I just had so that I don't poison my well. Now let's see if I can use the joystick to control. Oh, look at that, I can. So I have here applications, demos, firmware and games. So I'm guessing if I push the down, we'll go to games first. That's what we're here for. Oh, select. Original? No? How about pull up? Twist? Twist. Nope, twist? Twist. <laughs> oh, it's uh, this button. There we go. So now we can choose a game from here. So what was one of my favorites? There was a game called Drag Racing, which I really enjoyed. I feel really good at it. A, B, C, D, Drag Race. Try pushing on this now. Okay, maybe I'm using the wrong controller. Maybe I should use this one. Okay, maybe it's reset. One. Ah, there it is. That's what we want. Okay, so we select G. So if I recall, G is like what game? So if there's multiple games on a cart. So in which case we're gonna hit one for game one. So, how do you play this? Do you remember? You push down, push up, you twist. Okay, we chose the most difficult game to start <laughs> to start off with. Okay, so we got the controller and we're up, down, go, push, make it go. Come on, drive. Oh, I'm moving. One of us is moving. Okay, I put the camera down and I figured it out. So it's like a joystick shifter would be. So one is the top left, two down in the bottom, three is up in the top right, and four. So, and when you twist it, it gives you gas. So we'll twist it, get gas. And then we want to get close to the red line. Oh, well, I just won chicken dinner. Let's, uh, let's try it again. Oh, we have a player two. <laughs> so player two. So we'll start in... Gear number one, we twist. Second gear, twist. And then we wait till that RPMs get up there. Third gear, twist. Let's see, get the fourth gear. Fourth gear, keep it twisting. All right. Yeah, it only took 25.5. So I guess that's as high as the counter can go. Um, these things don't have a lot of RAM in them. And I'm guessing the counter just, that's it. Times out at 25 seconds. So the question is, how do I get out of this back into the main menu? So I feel like I had some combination of buttons configured in RetroPie. As if I hold down one of these buttons and then I hit something else at the same time. So I do that and I get a reload of that page. Now if I hit reset and number two at the same time, I'm back in. Sweet. Okay, let's choose another game. Now I wanted to show you Pong because that was really cool. Wow, there's international karate. <laughs> so many good games on here. Pac-Man, we'll have to see what Pac-Man looks like. You know what, we're here, let's do it. So Pac-Man final build. And if you recall, to load a game, what did I hit? Was it number four? No, number one. Number one. Let's see if there's any sound. 
So obviously this is a much newer version. This was not done at the original day of <laughs> of the uh, Fairchild Channel F. Cool. Oh, this is great. Who would have thought somebody would have put the effort and time to remake such a great classic. I wonder if their logic of the ghosts matches the original arcade. Remember there's different ghost colors, did different things. Some would run away from you. And of course there was that, there was one of those cheats, right? Where you can like park yourself in a corner down here someplace and they would never get you. I guess not. We push these two buttons, exit the game. Due to Atari creating Pong, I'm actually thinking that the game I'm thinking of is going to be called Tennis. Let's try that. So game number what? Let's try game number three. Game number two. Game number, okay. Okay, there we go. Let's just push the number two. I don't know what these M's and S's and stuff mean. I just keep pushing buttons until eventually the game plays. No? Oh, I don't want this. This is hockey, because we got a goalie. They must have pushed reset. Let's try this again. Game number two. <laughs> like, give me some instructions here, guys. And then S2, I guess. M2. S2. M2. Start. Okay. Can I twist this? No, this, this version doesn't twist. Okay. Let's reset this game again. Let's try a different one. Game number three. There is no game number three. Game number four. Okay, so back to game number two. And then I have an option for an S. So I'll push a number four for an S. And can I turn? Believe it or not, I figured out the buttons. <laughs> okay, so when I'm in the menu, I can move up and down with this. If I push the number two button, I can back out of the menu I'm in, back to the previous menu. And then when I so go to select a menu, so say I want to select Fairchild Games, I can push the number one button to select it. Then I go through the menu here until I find a game I want to play. Let's try Robot Wars. We got Prototype and which one's the original? Robot War. That one there, 1977. So now I push the number one button to select it. Now if I wanted to get out of this game, if I push all four buttons at the same time, It'll bring me back to the menu. We can go back into Robot War. Robot War. Game. I don't know again. I did notice on this cartridge that I have that it says to play Robot War plus reset, then an M appears. Well, that's not what's happening. A G is appearing. And then push one slowest for the fastest. I see. Since we have different thing happening, let's push game number one, M number one. Okay, we are in Robot War. Dude. Whoa, 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 they're coming to get me. Jesus, what am I supposed to do? Oh, I think I'm supposed to make them all come towards, when I start moving, they all start chasing me. And then, those blue squares kill them. So if I can make them all go towards that blue square, then we're good. Can I go off the screen? Nice, that's what I needed to do. That's great. Do, 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 do. So we'll kill them, kill this guy, and then kill this guy. Yeah! Oh, this is kind of fun. Do, 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 do. Oh no, oh no. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. So sometimes they seem to um, respawn. I don't know what makes them respawn. <laughs> this is actually kind of fun. Oops. Oh, when they kill you, they respawn. I get it. I wonder why there's no points on the other side. Like, shouldn't we get points for the robots every time they kill me? Anyway, we can exit by pushing all four buttons. Boom. Well, I hope you had fun playing with the Channel F because I certainly did, especially since I had to go through and remember four years ago what it was I did for configuring buttons and mapping them to features in RetroPie. So this was a lot of fun. This was a little blast to pass down memory lane. And I can't wait to play this with some friends this winter. So I'm gonna bring this to my cabin because I think this is gonna be a blast, especially if I can find the Pong game slash tennis where you can actually move the, the uh, paddle by shifting the joystick left and right. I gotta find it.